All right, guys, thanks for joining me back for another video. We're going to be talking specifically today about rep schemes. Now, I will preface this by saying that the rep schemes that you are using, whether it be for maximal strength development or it be for hypertrophy, should support the client's goals. That is always the overarching theme with any workouts that we deliver to our clients. They should support the client's goals. Second thing, what I'm going to talk about is unique to me in my own training, as well as the majority of the people I work with. Anytime I put out information, I've done it myself. I am not a coach that has an idea that I read in a textbook and I am gonna talk about it for the first time to you guys. I'm gonna actually have done it and have made sure that what I am delivering to you has been tested, it has been refined. Because as we know, a lot of what we read in a textbook doesn't go the same way when we try to use it in our own training or that of our clients. So if you are a young coach, take this to mean that you are going to learn a lot in the trenches and that the textbook, albeit is a great resource and is gonna definitely teach us the finer nuances like the physiology is not the end all be all, okay? So the first thing I wanna say is that if you're watching this, you probably know that I am a conjugate system guy. I've been following the conjugate system for 15 plus years now. I've had a lot of unique experiences with it uh, in both um, the classroom setting in graduate school, studying things like the physiology of the box squat, studying things like the physiology of using a sled to improve aerobic adaptations, as well as going to Westside, going through Louis' special strength certification, reading literally every text that he puts out for that, which if you're familiar, there's a long list of books where you can just glean an incredible amount of information. Um, so if you're, if you're interested in learning more about that, I would recommend you check it out on their website. And then being able to apply these methods first to my own training and it, you know, as I was a young coach training at a facility as an intern and then later combining that with CrossFit and now kind of at the final point where we're at using conjugate combined with conditioning in a very cohesive and um, a really effective plan that essentially allows us to train concurrently and make gains with all biomotor ability. So really cool stuff. Um, but what we're gonna talk about today specifically is using rep schemes that may be more applicable to a specific side of the population that you're working with. Okay, so first things, we're gonna talk about maximal strength development. We know the max effort method is the best way of doing that. However, maximal effort method means a one rep max. It doesn't mean a two, a three, or four. That constitutes sub-maximal work. So a little bit different, similar adaptations, but a true maximal effort lift is going to uh, elicit the highest amount of motor unit recruitment. Okay, it's going to use the most amount of high threshold motor units. So we know that the basic physiology of this is that if we can improve maximal strength, there's connections to every other biomotor ability. You'll see carryover to strength endurance, okay? And it makes sense if you think about it. If your 1RM squat goes up, of course your 5RM is going to follow, but usually the inverse isn't true. If we improve the 5RM, usually doesn't carry over to the one around, in most cases that is. So with what we're trying to achieve today is we might have clients that may or may not be competing in powerlifting. We work with a lot of people in the general fitness setting at CrossFit gyms. I work with people that are like myself and uh, for this video to make this as simple as I can, I'm gonna use myself as the guinea pig and tell you why I've arrived at using a different, a little bit different form of training. So. For maximal strength development, I don't typically do true one rep maxes anymore. And the reason is simple. I wanna stay away from any type of mechanical breakdown. I'm 37, I'm gonna be 38 in January. I have three kids under four years old and I've incurred, I've had bumps and bruises along the way. I've had serious lower back issues from pulling conventional deadlifts and not really worrying as much about my technique. Secondly, Conventional deadlift, um, based on my anthropometrics, is not a great lift for me. I can't lift off the floor with a neutral spine. There's just no way around it. And you know what, you might be able to, but I'm not one of the ones that can. So conventional deadlift, a lift that I've spent a lot of time with over the last decade plus, not a great lift for me, so I've done damage with that. Third thing, or second thing rather, is benching. I've incurred Basically generalized front-sided shoulder pain, which a lot of people will have as they internally rotate as they're going through range of motion with their bench. That's something I like to stay away from. So um, um, when I do bench, I tend to, to use 
a neutral grip bar like a football bar or a T-grip bar uh, because I can find myself into better position in terms of keeping the glenohumeral humeral joint centrated, which is essentially maximal ball and socket contact. Those are things that I'm thinking about. So going to a true one rep max with conjugate, a lot of coaches argue, well, we need to see where people break down. Personally, I know where I break down. Many of my clients, I know where they break down as well. Do I need to necessarily see that and put them in a position where the risk is essentially greater than the reward? They're not training for a powerlifting meet. So do they need to actually go through a lift for a true maximal effort and we see where breakdown is? I would argue no, we don't need that because that's simply outside of their uh, realm of needs. So what we do use is a very simple rep scheme and you've probably seen this style rep scheme before. It's five, four, three, two, one plus. So just to break this down in terms of volume, this is 15 total reps if we just do one rep here, okay? So very much we're staying within the guidelines of optimal volume if you're familiar with Prolipin's chart. That's probably another video in and of itself talking about optimal volume prescriptions. We're staying within the guidelines of that because you know as we progress through this and we strategically build weight, we're gonna be around 85%, 90 plus percent. So again, if you look that up, you'll see that we're staying right where we need to be. Second thing is that we are getting the adaptations of working with a maximal, a near maximal load, but we are not going to a place where there's going to be mechanical breakdown, okay? And that's part of the way that we stay away from uh, not only inducing compensation patterns, but risking injury. So what does this one plus mean? This means a heavy set, we're essentially building. You're probably thinking, well, what am I starting with? What does the first set look like for this? And you know what? One thing that we use very well with conjugate is auto-regulation. We go by how we're feeling. So if I said, hey, this is 60%, that might be true. But maybe you had a bad night's sleep, you're fighting with your wife, or your kids are screaming all week like mine are, and maybe 60% feels like 80. So maybe you need to downgrade this to 50. I don't believe in using percentages in this particular case. Go by feel. So your first set might be a load that you could do five reps pretty easily with. It's definitely not gonna be anywhere near a five RM load, uh, but it's really a comfortable set where you can have perfect movement, you can feel the weight, but not be in a position where you're essentially going to have some fatigue that sets in prior to where we get to the real stuff. So we're progressing each set, okay? so adding about 10%, again, go by feel. And as we get to the end, this is where it's heavy. It's a heavy single. Most of you that have been training for any length of time know what a heavy single is. And again, we could have that vary on any given day. But all I want from myself as well as my clients is this to be heavy enough where you're like, okay, this is heavy, but I have the potential of hitting one to three reps, okay? One to three reps is all we're looking for. This is very concise, it's very simple, and it allows us to auto-regulate, it allows us to get the adaptations that we would normally see with sub-maximal training in terms of high levels of motor unit recruitment. But again, the trade-off is, is that we don't have the risk associated with going to a true breakdown, mechanical breakdown, uh, maximal effort. All right, so I like it that way. Now, you're probably thinking, well, is it as good as max effort? For me, it is, because I'm still getting stronger, I'm still getting results. Am I gonna get more results if I do true maximal effort? Maybe. I'm not saying that max effort, this is better than true max effort. It, it might be in some situations. For me, if I'm healthy, and I don't have any associated injuries that I would normally have with pulling things like a conventional deadlift, this is gonna be better for me. I'm gonna feel better, psychologically I'm better. So we, and we never talk about that as much is that the psychology has to be there too. If I'm feeling beat down, run down, and I'm just kind of achy, then it doesn't bode well. And I get into the gym and I'm already kind of in a negative headspace. So this is something that keeps me feeling fresh. I feel like I, I did a fair amount of work, enough work at least to, to uh, make me think that I'm gonna get stronger or feel like I'm gonna get stronger for the long run but I leave the gym feeling refreshed. I'm not feeling broken, okay? So for myself, for a majority of the people that I work with, they have modest goals. We're gonna get stronger from this. I'm getting stronger, so I'm still hitting PRs, or lifetime PRs actually, on 
squats, deadlifts, and presses, uh, albeit I don't pull conventional anymore. I only pull with a trap bar. And again, that's probably another video for another day too. This still affords me the ability to feel strong. I, mentally, I, I'm motivated to do this type of training or use this type of rep scheme. And I can still feel, lift some heavy weight, but I don't have the same risk, okay? So again, overarching theme is what? We always use training or deliver program design that supports the client's goals. If I'm working with a power lifter, of course, they need to do true maximal effort work. I would still argue, does it need to be past the point of mechanical failure? In my opinion, I don't believe so. There are other coaches out there that would, would say different. And that's perfectly fine. We're all entitled to our own opinion. But at this stage of my career, I've learned that we're better off being able to fight another day. We're better off being able to tune into other things that will give us signs of discrepancies or limitations that people may be having. And we can make corrections without having to put people at you know a higher level of risk, okay? So this is our maximal strength rep scheme. If I can find my eraser. Very simple, it's concise, resting two to three minutes between sets. Again, you're gonna love this if you haven't tried this style. Give it a try and what I would say, my last piece of advice is build to that heavy single, don't worry about what it is. If it's 80% of your 1RM and it feels heavy that day and you do three reps, don't worry about it, okay? Don't worry so much about what the actual number is. Know that if you're putting in the time and you're dedicating time to your assistance exercises where you know, we're gonna help bring up your, most of your limitations, then the rest will, will speak for itself. Okay, so from here, we just had more of a maximal strength emphasis. As we progress, and we're thinking about, most people wanna gain lean tissue, okay? By and large, like I said, the goals of my clients is look better, feel better. 108642 does that for them where they're now, again, back to the psychology, we'll talk about the psychology first and then the actual physiology, is that you're feeling like you're getting a pump, like you're doing work. This allows us to, again, strategically build to a two plus set. It's 30 total repetitions, so much, double the volume of what we just previously did. But again, the goal here is more time under tension. This is the type of rep scheme that you can use for squats, I would even say probably not so much a conventional deadlift, but maybe a trap bar deadlift, touch and go style, um, close grip floor press, things of that nature. Weighted pull-ups, if you have the ability to, to add additional weight to a strict pull-up, good option here. Um, but the goal here is time under tension, hypertrophy, ending with a two to five, okay? So two to five reps is what we're looking for. And it's clean, it's concise, it gives us what we need, there's no huge amount of mechanical breakdown because again, we're not ending on a true 2RM. It's just a heavy two that we can maybe do three times. Typically I find myself, and I'm more fast switch muscle fiber, I'm usually around two to three reps with what I end here. I usually do this pretty well. And these subsequent or, or prior sets rather, fatigue me a lot more than someone that's more type one muscle fiber, okay? So these first three sets here, I'm usually pretty tired from. Uh, four is usually tough and then two is very tough. Again, I'm usually getting two to three reps. So if that says anything or gives you any ind indication of what you might be feeling with this, um, you know, it, it could be if you're like me and you're more explosive. So that's it. Um, again, think about the rep scheme supporting the client's goals. If you have a power lifter, they're going to need to strain more. They're going to need to, to do some lifts and feel what it feels like going to a true maximal effort. I'm not saying that I never program true max effort. I just think about more of myself and for the majority of people I work with, if they're telling me their goals are to look better, feel better, why do we need to do true maximal effort work and risk them getting injured? Especially if you're working with people remotely like I am, it's even harder. We're not seeing them on the ground level. We can't see what's happening in the session. So there are a lot of things that we have to contend with if we're working online. These two rep schemes allow us to get maximal strength adaptations, hypertrophic adaptations, but a lot lower risk of injury. So again, return on investment for me is higher with this, but as always, there's never a one size fits all. So feel free to experiment this stuff. If you have questions, let us know. Feel free to subscribe to our channel. We're gonna be posting lots of great co content in the coming months about <laughs>